Hi there, my name is Vic Veer. I'm an ENT consultant that works for the NHS in central London. Now, I think Americans would call me an attending, but I don't really know what that is. But what I do want to talk about is if breathing exercises can help you unblock your nose. So the first question I have for myself is, can forcing yourself to breathe through your nose unblock your nose? And also, can the way you breathe unblock your nose? So what I'd like to do is give you a demonstration. If you could follow along with me, what I'd like you to do, if you're healthy enough, and also if you've got a blocked nose, either because you've got a cold or hay fever, or you generally have a very blocked nose and you need to use nasal spray, something like that. What I'd like you to do is pinch your nose, hold your breath for as long as you can, as long as you feel it's safe. And when you get to a point where your face feels a bit red, you feel like, oh, I need to take a breath. Take a breath and then sniff in at the same time. You'll suddenly notice that your nose completely unblocks, as if by miracle, it just seems to unblock out of nowhere. And if you've got a wheeze or a bit of asthma, you'll notice that your wheeze has also gone away as well. It doesn't last for very long, but a lot of people think, oh my God, this is some weird breathing technique and it's, it's just a miracle, it's magic. It's not, it's just a simple mechanism that all doctors know about. What I'm going to try and do is explain that to you as simply as I can so you understand how it works and how you can use it in your own lives. So there are a lot of breathing exercises out there that help you breathe. And a lot of them talk about oxygen and taking deep breaths in gets more oxygen in. Well, I guess it does do that a little bit, but if you wear one of these sort of pulse oximeter machines that sits on your finger and watches how much oxygen's in your blood, you'll notice that even when you're taking a deep breath in, the oxygen levels on that machine is about 99%, 100%, 98% sometimes, a bit lower if you're a smoker for a long time but it's very high 90s in the most cases. And if you take a few deep breaths, you might go up by an extra percentage point or there or thereabouts. And if you hold your breath for as long as you possibly can, you might drop one or two percentage points. But the oxygen levels don't really change much, maybe one or two percentage points. What really changes when you take a, if you're breathing out and out like, <sighs> if you do that, you're not actually breathing in more oxygen. What you're really doing is blowing out carbon dioxide. Now, um, I think we all know that you breathe in, breathe in oxygen and you breathe out carbon dioxide. And if you over-breathe, what you're not doing is taking in more oxygen. What you're really doing is blowing off more carbon dioxide. So when you hold on to your breath voluntarily, hold your breath like this, what you're doing is letting the carbon dioxide rise in your system, which sets off a, a bit more acid in your system. The brain notices this very quickly because it's very, very tightly controls the pH or the acid level in your body. When it sees this happening, the body goes, right, we have to breathe. We need to get this um, acid level back down to normal. And so to do this, one of the effects it has is to open up your nose so you can breathe a little bit better. And it also opens up your lungs. That's why some people with asthma, when you hold their breath, if they've got a little bit of a wheeze, if you make them hold their breath for as long as they possibly can and then take a breath, you suddenly find that, oh, my wheeze is gone. It's only for a short time and it doesn't really work very well for allergy-induced asthma. But exercise-induced asthma, you know, when you're running around and you suddenly get an asthma attack, that's because a lot of people think it's because you're over-breathing. Now, if you hold your breath and you and you, you can get rid of a wheeze like that, I, I often do. I did the Buteco course, I think about 20, 25 years ago. And it does help in some situations when I'm looking around for a Ventolin inhaler and oh, I can't find it. And you just thought, all right, whilst I'm, I don't want to panic and start over breathing, making my asthma worse. I just hold my breath for a short time and I know that it'll make my wheeze a little bit better and give me a bit more time to find my uh, Ventolin inhaler. Now, the same thing happens with my nose. If I got a very blocked nose, um, and I'm thinking, oh, I've, I've got to use a spray, but if I spray it up my nose, it'll just hit this bit of boggy stuff in my nose and come straight back out again. I hold my breath for a short time. It opens up my nose for a short time, and then I can spray something in there, and it actually will work. So that's how these breathing exercises work. They, like the Buteco method, what that does is, is it encourages you to not breathe so hard, uh, to breathe less, and that slowly builds up your carbon dioxide by a small amount, and that unblocks your nose, unblock, unblocks your breathing, so your asthma comes down a little bit. So that's why when people go for scuba diving for the first time, the scuba divers will always say, uh, look, um, do you have asthma, by the way? And you like go, well, yeah, 
yeah, I've got asthma, but I only use my blue inhaler maybe once a year or something like that. And they go, well, I'm not sure if you're allowed. And you're like, what's wrong? It's because you're having to breathe through your mouth the whole time. And, and a lot of times when you're going underwater and you're breathing through your mouth, you feel like you're, you're, it feels like you're panicking when you're an asthmatic. You feel like, oh, I'm getting an asthma attack and you have to come up and take a breath for air. I mean, you're breathing air through this thing. Over breathing like this seems to set them off and cause this sort of reaction, which is why the Buteka system works quite well. It helps you control your breathing so you don't over breathe and it opens up your lungs and it can also open up your nose which is why some people say if you force yourself to breathe through your nose if, if it's slightly blocked and you're forcing yourself by taping your mouth shut or, or just doing this and forcing yourself to breathe through a slightly congested nose what you're not doing is going <sighs> where you can get an awful lot of air in and out and you over breathe what you're doing is forcing yourself to breathe through a blocked nose that will slowly make your carbon dioxide levels rise. And then you will notice that your nose will just unblock for a short time. Now, what I'm not saying is that breathing exercises are pointless. No, I'm not saying that at all. I think it's great that there are people out there who are trying to make this mechanism uh, understandable and relatable to people so they can use it in their own lives. But I just wanted to explain how it works uh, because I think uh, the members of my uh, community, my subscribers, uh, know quite a lot about breathing now. The, Poor people that most of you have got sleep apnea or other sort of breathing problems. And I think you're on the sort of next level so you can understand some of these basic concepts with physiology and trying to understand how this can unblock your nose, unblock your breathing. And I hope that's helped in some way. But if you want to learn more about how nasal sprays can unblock your nose, look at this video up here. And if you want to learn about how you can use a little nasal dilator to open up your nose, I should put another video down here for you. Thank you very much for watching. It's very kind of you to stay to the end. Bye-bye.